What's up guys, it's Ivan. So in this video, I wanted to go into email analytics with you and show you something that ClickMagic cannot help you with in terms of tracking, all right, on GetResponse. So um, what email analytics is, is it's basically a, a program inside GetResponse. It's just a little add-on that allows you to track how many people clicked on your email and how many people clicked on the links within your email. So extremely useful. So let me just show you um, roughly what it looks like, some of the options available, and what parts we really need to focus on, okay? So I'm actually gonna go to the part that we need to focus on first. Uh, so I'm gonna go to autoresponders time-based because we sent time-based autoresponders uh, for our examples on diabetes. And I just wanna show you kind of some of the things that we should look at and what, what conclusions we can draw from it, all right? So first thing we need to do <clears throat> is click on our diabetes campaign. So by the way, if, if, if you missed it, I went to statistics, I went to email analytics. Um, and here I went to time-based autoresponders. Action-based are the ones that are conditional-based, which we did not do. So I went to time-based uh, and I will click on my campaign and just let it load a bit. And here it's going to tell you some statistics. So it's going to tell you how many emails were sent in total. So we had two autoresponders. We had two subscribers. Two times two, five, right? So uh, that's four. So two emails were open. So that's 50%, okay? Uh, so that tells you here. So these are just the basic stats. So let's let's just take a quick look. Four emails sent, two opened, two obviously unopened, one clicked, zero goals, okay? So that tells us something. That says that for some reason, two of our emails or two or some person didn't really click on, uh, didn't open two of our emails for some reason. So we need to kind of figure out what it is. Now, 50% is actually a pretty good open rate, okay? Get response tells you that the average is about 25. So as long as you're above that and 50% is, is good, you are above average, all right? So um, if you click on unique, it's gonna tell you unique clicks. Um, so how many individual people clicked on what links? Now disregard my exact statistics. Notice how it's the same here. Um, it's because I, you know, for, for uh, example purposes, I sent myself emails and then I obviously unsubscribed. So the data is not too good to use as an example. Uh, but basically, I'll tell you what the numbers represent and what you should be looking for on your email analytics, okay? So that's about that. So let me go to the open tab. So let's see what we can analyze here. So in the open tab, let's go to unique open. You will have two uh, or however many autoresponders you have here at the bottom. In our case, it's two. So here it says two, 67%. By the way, the 50% here, that's the average, right? That's in total two out of four people opened emails. And over here, it says 67. So this means that two people opened our email, which is 67% of all the people that received it. So you may be thinking, well, you had four people that received it, right? Or four emails that went out. How do you have 67? Um, so actually, if, if we want to go into more detail, we can click on this individual autoresponder. And as you can see here, it says that two total were opened, two unique open, so two different unique people, and one was not opened for this particular autoresponder. So we had three people, two of them opened it, one did not. For which reason, when we go into total, it tells us that it's 67% because two out of three people in total that received that email actually opened it, okay? So that's really good. That tells you that 67% of people opened my welcoming email. That's good. I should keep it as it is. Maybe I can improve it, but I shouldn't focus on it. It's, it's really good. I'm doing something right. Let me use this template that I'm using and apply it to all my other emails maybe, right? Whatever it is. So they're opening it. So the next one you see here, you see zero clicks. So this is zero out of, so let's see how many people received it. So I'm going to go again into this particular email. You don't have any opened messages. Okay. So let's see how many were sent. So we had only one sent, for which reason it's 0%, okay? And you can click on the contacts, by the way. You can click on here, and it tells you what exact contact it was that received that email and didn't open it. Um, and like, like it says here, the number of subscribers may differ if the people have unsubscribed or been deleted, okay? So your numbers may be a bit skewed if people left or if you deleted them from the list. But basically, uh, we know that one has been sent and zero out of one have opened it. See, it says unopened. So let me go back to select all. So what conclusion are we drawing from this? Our first email is opened. Maybe our title, maybe our name is good. Um, but the second email, no one really opens. Okay. So let's look at the inside and see, do people like the inside of the mail? So this tells you, do people like the outside? 
Uh, do they believe your title is trustworthy? Do they think the source is trustworthy? Do they open it? Are they looking forward to your email? And now let's see what they think about the insights. So over here it says one, 33%. So doing some basic math, right? One out of three is 33%. So that means that three people, uh, again, received this email and one person clicked a link, clicked some link on your email, which you will be able to use via Click Magic. So this part you can see on Click Magic in our in our uh, video where I talked about how you can determine your exact traffic source, which you can see over here. Um, whenever you put in, say, into your autoresponder your domain name, we put a difference, uh, an additional sub ID next to it, so we can determine exactly what part of the email people clicked. So we can track that on Click Magic. Okay, so that's not a problem. But this tells us that one out of three people clicked a link. So that's that's pretty good, right? But we should use this as kind of a sign to gauge where we're at. So one out of three people clicked our link. So what happened to the other two people? Is something wrong with our message? Is something wrong with our link? Is our link maybe not opening properly? Is our message not good? Do we have too much of something in there? Okay, so maybe we should go back and look. Now, sorry about that. 33% uh, isn't bad, okay, by all means, but... Um, suppose you have it at 5% or you have it at 2%. People are barely clicking your link. What's going on? Okay. This is exactly what allows you to test and to see what you can improve and do better. And then you go back, you do some research, you go back and you try to fix and try something else. All right. A, B split testing, like, like we discussed here in these two videos. Okay. Um, so that's that. Then for this email, as you can see, it's zero. So, um, no one clicked on any links here, but that's because we didn't actually have any links. So we can't really look at that. But assuming you would, you would do the same thing. So if you have zeros across the board everywhere, that should be a flag that no one, that maybe people are opening your messages, as you can see from here, but no one's clicking any links. So you should work on that. Maybe you don't seem trustworthy. People don't even bother taking or clicking on the links that you are offering them, all right? Uh, so you should work on that. And then these percentages here, um, so like I mentioned, this just gives you the average of whatever it is. So one out of four people clicked, so that's 25%. And over here, it just, that's the deviation from the average. So here we have one out of three people clicked, so that's 33%, so that's 8% deviation from the average, okay? Over here, zero people clicked, so that's 25% below the average, which is 0%, okay? Something like that. So that's basically, that, that's the really the main part I wanted to, um, to, to uh, come across to you guys. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll briefly touch upon everything else, all the other features, but basically uh, you should know that by reading this tab, the open tab, it tells you how many people actually open your emails and look forward to your emails. Have you built enough trust? And the clicked part is after you build that initial trust, do people actually read your content? Do people click on your links, okay? So like I said, get response average is 25%. If it's lower than 10%, you should definitely fix your email or fix your headline, you know, read up some books, do some research uh, and find out what you can do better. So uh, let's look at this, like the next tab. So here you have the social tab. This is basically if you, um, if you attach the social links to your emails, it just tracks how many people shared. All right. So something pretty useful, I guess. Uh, goals, you can set up goals. So there's not much need for this because we have our click magic uh, and this just allows you to track um, how many people click your website after clicking your links, right? So it, 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 it allows you to basically do a conversion check. So this unsubscribe button shows how many people unsubscribed. So we had three in total, two of them unsubscribed. It tells you the reason down here at the bottom. Uh, so the total is two. The, uh, these two people that are subscribed, which was me, the reason was other. But the reason could be does not apply, no permission, too many emails from this campaign, too many emails, content relevant. So if you have people unsubscribed for a particular common reason, you should address that immediately, right? If they say content is irrelevant, maybe you should, you should find what the discrepancy is between your landing page and your emails. What is it that causes people to land on your landing page to give you their email and their name maybe, and then unsubscribe because they said the content's irrelevant. Something doesn't seem to match. They expected one thing, they got another, okay? So things like that you should fix and kind of look into more detail from this. Uh, other is you can't really unfortunately make any definitive conclusions from there. Um, yeah, so then you have bounced, 
bounce means uh, emails that people put in did not work they weren't the right emails they don't exist or they, they they misspelled something and the email didn't deliver properly that's bounced right complaints uh so complaints the way uh complaints are generated is if people report your emails as spam so a very bad sign if they report your email as spam they blacklist it um that's not good so that's considered a complaint so as long as you have zero you're in good shape if you have any more than that you should take a look at your email and see what you can do, right? And again, back to this unsubscribe button, I can't stress enough the importance of this information here. Like if it says no permission, maybe you didn't you didn't talk to the person enough and you didn't specify that I'll be sending you these emails. So maybe on your landing page, you wanna put a little message saying, uh, I'll be sending you additional emails, keep informed, right? So that before they sign up, they know what's coming, okay? So that's about it for our autoresponders um, analysis. If you're sending individual emails to people, that's newsletter analysis, you can click here. And we didn't really send out any newsletters, but it tells you the exact same thing here. So how many people opened your newsletter? How many people clicked in, uh, your, your newsletter, right? Um, RSS, I, I, again, the exactly same thing. Um, RSS is if, is if you have a blog, for example, um, and if you write a post on your blog, then you have a choice to email your subscriber list immediately after you put up a new post or if you make changes to post, you email them with whatever message you want saying, hey, check out this new post. And you can do that by clicking here, create RSS to email, okay? So there's three different messages you can create and get response, newsletter, autoresponder, and RSS. And this is the RSS analytics tab. Uh, the subscription tab um, just tracks how many subscribers you gain, what the growth was, you know, the subscriber location. Uh, so yeah, so this has all the different forms. I mean, the, the main one that's going to apply to us is API because we've integrated GetResponse with ClickFunnels. So um, the, this is probably the only form of subscription method that we're going to see. Email clients, uh, don't confuse this with clients that you emailed. Email clients uh, refers to uh, what type of email software did they use? Did they use Gmail? Did they use Yahoo? Um, did they use some private email? Okay, so this tells you what's the most common email that people use to open your emails. So that's that. Act, uh, so time-based is the autoresponders that we've set up. When someone signs up, they get automatic uh, email sequence. Okay, so this is probably the most popular one. Action-based is um, similar to what we've discussed in the previous video where we talked about automation workflows here. Uh, and this is conditional messages. So if this happens, then we send them a message and this tracks the progress for that. Goals, like I said, um, like once you verify domain and whatnot and fill in this information, it's going to allow you to, um, <clears throat> it's uh, going to allow you to basically track results to your website, right? And see how many sales you got and whatnot. Um, you can do that. We have click magic uh, because it's much more detailed and it involves much more information than just from get response. Uh, but if you want to use get response, like I said, you know, you can do landing pages here and whatnot. Feel free to do that too. Uh, just make sure to put your only domain URL. Okay. So in our examples in ClickMagic, we had the domain name slash subdomain that was necessary. We had to put that in. Um, in this case, uh, only put the domain name and then you can add the sub ID later. All right. Manage reports is also pretty cool because this feature allows you to send uh, results and progress to. So if I click create report, you can choose the campaign and you can send the report, say, every day, every week, every month in any format you want, like Excel, for example, um, and send report to whatever email you want. Or you can also send post delivery. So, for example, five days after your newsletter is sent, let me see the results five days after. You can't do that, too. OK, so small things like that. So that's about it, guys. I, I, I hope you gained some value from this uh, email um, and. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next videos.